Hello, this is the third video on the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. In the first video, we introduced the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1, where the way you evaluate a, in, um, a definite integral is by finding the antiderivative and plug it in the bounds. In the second video, we had three examples. And now we're going to have three more examples in this third video. So let's take our first one. We have e to the x. I'm trying to find the area under the function e to the x. But look at these bounds. 3 halves the natural log of 4 and 2 times the natural log of 7. All right, here's the graph of it. And we're going to find that area exactly by finding the antiderivative. What function has e to the x as its derivative? It's e to the x. All right, great. Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 says that your job should be then to plug in the upper limit get that value, and then plug in the lower limit, get that value, and subtract. All right, here we go. What is e raised to the 2 log 7? You'd like to be able to cancel the e in the log, but not with that 2 there. You have to use a property of log for first. The natural log, or even log, or any kind of base, a log with any base, if you have a multiplier in front, what you want to do is bring that up as the exponent on the inside. And so that 2 comes up and becomes the exponent on 7. We'd have e to the natural log of 7 squared. And now we can cancel. It's just 7 squared, 49. Same thing for the other. e to the 3 halves log 4. Bring the 3 halves up as the exponent on 4. And then we can cancel. It's just 4 to the 3 halves. Remember that is the square root of 4, who's then cubed. 2 cubed. It's 8. The answer to this question is 49 take away 8. That area is exactly equal to 41. Okay, so after finding the antiderivative, now it becomes a trouble point of just being able to evaluate the algebra once we use more and more different functions. Let's move on to example number 7. I'm trying to find the area under 1 over x. From those strange bounds, <laughs> 1 over root e up to e to the uh, 5 halves, e to the 5 halves. <laughs> How do we find that? Well, we've got to start off with, there's the graph. We've got to start off with finding the antiderivative. What function has 1 over x as its derivative? Can't use the power rule on that one. That's when we have x to the negative 1. If you try to add 1 to it, divide by the same thing, you'll be dividing by 0. But it's the partner to the exponential function, e to the x. It is the natural log of x. Now, as a technicality, we actually have the natural log of the absolute value of x, allowing for positive and negative input values. But when it comes time to evaluating the log function, it can only take on positive input values. So whenever you want to find the antiderivative of 1 over x, just remember to include the absolute value bars around the x. Unless you know that both of your input values are going to be positive, or all input values in between those two are going to be positive. So we don't know that for sure. So let's go ahead and just leave them in there. And so what we're supposed to do, fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 says plug in the upper limit and subtract what you get by plugging in the lower limit. So what is the natural log of, um, this is a positive value, so we can drop the absolute value bars, uh, the square root of e to the fifth. Like to be able to cancel, like in the previous question, but we can't. So we're just going to be able to fix it up a little bit algebraically. You know, e to the fifth, who's under the square root, can be written as a fractional exponent on e. It is e raised to the five halves power. Then we could cancel the ln and the e. We end up with 5 fs. Okay, great. Then we go ahead and plug in 1 over root e. And that's a positive value as well, so we can drop the absolute value bars. And everyone in between is positive, so it's fine. And um, once again, we'd like to be able to cancel. And we have to write that root e underneath the, in the denominator as, as a negative 1 half exponent, allowing us to cancel, and we get negative one-half. 
fundamental theorem of calculus says we just subtract these values 5 halves minus a negative 1 half. Well, add them. The answer is 6 halves or 3. That total area is exactly equal to 3. All right, we're doing great. We're doing really good. Let's do one more. How about the cosine of pi x from 0 to 1? Remember what the pi does. That, that affects the period. You have a original period of cosine x is 2 pi. By you multiplying the x by pi, you are, um, pi is a number that's bigger than 1, so you are shrinking the period. And actually, what you do to find the new period is you um, take the old period and divide by your multiplier. So 2 pi divided by pi, your period is actually 2. So you start at 0, you're done by the time you get to 2, and you would have completed a, a full period of cosine of pi x. What we have is half of a period. But the way cosine grows, something nice happens here. Well, fundamental theorem of calculus says we need to find the antiderivative. Now, let's see if we could do this without using some substitution that we don't know yet. What function would have cosine pi x as its derivative? It should be sine pi x. But if it's just the sine of pi x, then the chain rule going forward would bring in a factor of pi who's not there in our Anti, in our function here. So we have actually a 1 over pi multiplier out front to cancel that. This is on our list of, uh, go to the indefinite integral notes and you'll see at the last page shortcuts to, to use. We don't have to do substitution on this. There's a shortcut. Just sort of reason out. Use your intuition. That's all you need. The derivative of this is going to be the pi is going to come from the chain rule. It's going to cancel with the 1 over pi. It'll be exactly the cosine of pi x like we need. What's our job? We plug a 1 in, then plug a 0 in for x. But then we're talking about the sine of pi, which is 0, and the sine of 0, which is 0. Well, I'm supposed to subtract these. The answer should be 0. Let's take a look at the graph and make sure that our analysis is sound. A full period of cosine starts at 1, goes down comes back up okay so we have half a period so we start at one we go down to minus one and these two areas cancel each other out and the area that's below the x-axis is negative and so the positive area and the negative area cancel each other out so we get zero all right that's great we have done eight different examples of using the fundamental theorem of calculus part one great job now we want to turn our attention to the fundamental theorem of calculus part two which is different from this it still talks about the connecting tissue between integration and differentiation okay and it's going in the other direction though if you have an integral you can take its derivative here we have a we have a derivative and we're trying to integrate our derivative by finding the antiderivative and so in the next video we will explore the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Reach out to me if you need some help. I'm happy to help you through this, this calculus journey. All right, take care. I'll see you in the next video.